Good morning. We have a special guest. The special guest is my husband. Yeehaw. Hey, yo. Oh, my God. I went upstairs to make my sandwich, so now I'm hot. Good morning. We missed you all. Rip to the girl bed, but look, I, I Halloween if I, Halloween seats, the seats. Oh whoa, oh whoa. <clears throat> Good morning. Welcome. Are um, we currently discussing anything? No. Oh. You can, you, so you can just make it blank. Oh, yeah, or you can hide it. It's fine. Gone. Um. Oh, I also need to update. I guess we really won't use BRB that much today. But okay. my recently read, currently reading, and reading mics are all wrong on the BRB screen. That makes sense. Um, we don't have any new small town gossip other than if you've seen our latest TikTok about the ferret. Um, and we still really, we don't have any new news about the ferret. We do have wacky family trip things to talk about. Yes. I'm very Separate excited about that. that. Yeehaw! What's your ferret theory? Hi, Please tell us. Hello, Wednesday. Thank you so much, Dylan. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! Listen. Listen. I, what I, I want to say is that it's not that serious. It's hilarious because, like, yes, it's it's you. It's serious enough that you can talk about it for your partner for all. Oh last yes, night. I'm we're so supportive sorry. of that. We've had a couple of people be like. I don't know. A little intense about the pet people are shop. commenting like you shouldn't go to pet st stores and like other like hot takes with like discourse. Yes. And we're like, I don't. I'm not here to talk about whether pet stores are ethical or not. I'm not partaking in pet store discourse. I'm partaking in <laughs> welcome to. We're talking about how a ferret was stolen. I'm partaking in the hilariousness that my entire town. Yes is losing their mind. Is, <laughs> has an opinion. Yes. On whether they think this girl took it or not. They're having feelings. The point is you're way over there. Yeah, we're we're in Oregon. And I think maybe that's the thing is like, it's not anyone who's like following us really who's like yes. trying to argue with people in the comments. It's like no, no, people no. who got this on their For You page yeah. who are, I guess, ferret rights activists. Yes. And that's fine. I don't even, I don't have an opinion one way or another on a ferret's rights. I don't know enough about. The, I don't know enough. <laughs> I don't know enough about the issue of ferret's rights to discuss whether or not ferrets should be in pet stores. Mm -hmm. That's something I could do more research on if I intended to speak on it. I don't. Right. I do not. Yeah. So it's been, but for the most part, honestly, it's mostly people making really funny puns about ferrets. Thank you, Paper Armor. We are absolutely not defending the pet store for having ferrets. We are the news. We yeah. are delivering the information. We are trying to ferret out the truth. Someone, Hannah, said that um, she went to play with it in the bathroom and escaped in the vents. That's so fair, except you can play with them in the store. Like, you can... If that Y'all are not going to the ferrets rights protest. If that was the case, here's the other additional information that is hearsay. When talking about it on the internet, I think we're only going to be posting things that, like, B&B &B Pet Stop has said. Or there, the, I guess, the news. There is some background information in that apparently she had a giant duffel bag with her. A giant duffel, it's not a Prada bag, but it was something that's, like, expensive. Ferret influencers. <laughs> so she went in with a giant bag and then came out still with a giant bag. Right. Which is a thickening of the plot in a, a like, a huge-ass duffel bag. Yeah. Yes. Bigger than a ferret-sized duffel. Very suspicious. <laughs> There's that, and then there is the fact that apparently... People who know her in real life. People who know her in real life, or, or people who say that they know her in real life, I don't know. I'm not trying to ruin this girl's life. We have way too many followers for me to be saying this, like, on TikTok. There's a TikTok. difference between someone who, like, is doing something that's not ethically good, like stealing ferrets. Yes. And, like, someone who's, like, hurting children. You yeah. Know? Like, yeah, 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 yeah. We're not saying... No, 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 no. But... Some people have said that she is an animal flipper, where she will, like, steal animals or get animals for cheap, will, like, post about wanting one on Facebook Marketplace, and then that animal will be up for sale on Facebook Marketplace for very expensive, which is very stressful and, like, a serious allegation and something that would be incredibly fucked up to do. So I don't know if that's actually what's happening. And I do also do not know. That's a terrible, It's that's really stressful yes. and scary. 
Which is why we're not talking about it. I put the turtles on their backs and leave. Because if that right. is the case, then that's like very but bad. But we have no proof of that. I have no at idea. All. There's no one who's been able to show like any like screenshot. screenshots. There's no one. There's just people. It's a lot of like my friend is in a Facebook group with her and knows that she does this, which isn't enough information for me with our almost half a million followers we to be like, this girl sucks. Because yeah. I don't know. You know, the other thing that I thought was going to happen, which has, which is really fucked up, is the search bar of it, despite us not showing this woman's name and not uh, saying her, showing her face, showing her name or anything, the search bar says her first name, last name, ferret, is like the search, which is stressful. <laughs> That's the level of seriousness with which the internet works. Right. And we didn't share her first name, last name, or her face. No. None of those things. We shared, you know, my town. Yes. Not the town I'm from. Not where I live. Maybe that's the thing. Because I say my hometown, and maybe people think I still live there at the very beginning. There have been like... people are like, you shouldn't shop there. And I'm like, I don't shop there. I would Number never one, shop I don't there. want a pet. Wrong. That's my biggest fear. Yes. Number two, even if I did, and I love the B&B Pet Stop. They're wonderful people every time I've talked to them as a child. They could be homophobic now. I would have no idea. That's the other clear. thing. There's a lot of it. We don't know anything. I don't know anything about what them. What we have are the ferret facts. Right. And that's what we're sharing. That's all we're interested in sharing. <laughs> yes. Listen, I hope so, Squigglebug. But that's the so other funny. thing is that there's all these people who are like, yes, liberate the ferret. And I'm like, y'all are so funny. Yeah. Some people are like, maybe she's giving him a better home. Maybe it was always meant to be. And I don't know. And I guess you're not wrong. You're right in her dialogue. But it is funny. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Hello, hello. Welcome, friends. So, yeah, there's the ferret drama that's ongoing, which is a lot. I love that positive mindset for them. Viva la ferret. <laughs> I just feel like if your real intention was to, like, free animals that you don't think should be in cages, like, you could just buy them. But also, like, where are ferrets from? Like, where would you set a ferret free? Oh, yeah, I don't, you can't, definitely cannot. In a field, cannot. like... I think that's the other thing, which is, again, not any of my business about whether or not ferrets should be owned by anyone. That's the thing. I don't know anything. I don't know enough. No. no I but... think my baby sister would have stolen a ferret. No, yeah, don't let him free. That's not gonna help him. He's essentially just, like, a long guy. Do you have a ferret, Blakey? We did. We did briefly. She was deaf and slept in her little box. Her litter box. I can't talk. Free Brittany the ferret. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yeah, they're apparently like $400. And I knew that they were like, <laughs> hello, oh my God, can I hi, hi. hello, hello. I knew that ferrets were like more than fourteen ninety nine, which is why I laughed so hard when I Morgan said that. that. Morgan thought they were fifteen dollars. They're just long rats. How can they be so expensive? They're huge. They're very big. No, I, I've seen a ferret. Have you seen a rat? Much smaller. Not what? Ferrets are like as big as I a feel cat like due to their. This length. is the size of a ferret, maybe a little smaller. No, right? longer, Lucy. bigger. No. no, there's no way. Google it. How long is ferret? Depends on the ferret. Fourteen ninety nine seems much more logical. Yes, where do they come from? Apparently, and I, again, I don't know. The truth is between her and $8 God, you yes. get it. I, I don't know, but apparently there's a group of evil people who are breeding ferrets, and they're from the specific place that people keep talking about. It's not Marshall. They're, they're collapsible, right? <laughs> they're calling it something else. I guess most ferrets are bred. How much could a ferret cost? Two dollars? $14.99. Anyway, apparently the ferret industry, the ferret raising and selling industry is kind of fucked up. And then in addition to that, I guess the price of ferrets just spiked. <laughs> oh, no. The ferret economy has gone up post. <laughs> and then I know that, sorry, but apparently after they were using, they were testing on ferrets for like the COVID vaccine, someone said, which could also be is fake. That true? I have no idea. I'm not Googling anything anyone says in the comments. No, because, because I, it's, I, none it yeah. it's none of my business. It's none of my business. Ferret cost of living. I don't know. Which makes sense, Blook Witch. Makes perfect sense. Yeah, the only like breeding anything that I know, my friend in high school, uh, who 
upon looking back, definitely has autism. Uh, she breeded hedgehogs for a while. Um, and spent, like, like had a normal high school, like, worked at in retail jobs. Spent literally all of that money putting money into breeding hedgehogs at her house in her, like, room and in her, like, porch. And, like, I'd like to be clear, she never had more than, like, six in her entire house at once. Because she was a very small breeder. But she did that for, like, five years. That's bonkers. And, like, helped pay for some of her college with it. And I was like, honestly, good for you. And she had really big opinions on, like, where p- other people got hedgehogs from. There's no way she was licensed. She was 16. <gasps> my name is Phoebe. My pronouns are they, them. Often called ferret autism. My name is Morgan. My pronouns are she, her. Not only for Flynn. <laughs> That's what the F stands for. Ferret Joe Biden. Ferret inflation Joe Biden. Yeah. Hello, hello. That he kept in a basement in a plastic bin. No, these hedgehogs, they ran her house. Hedgehogs are illegal almost everywhere in the U.S. Is that true? Yeah, I think you have to get, like, a license to get them. Apparently, ferrets are illegal in California. I think because of animal rights. That's crazy. They were not illegal in Alabama. I know a couple people who had hedgehogs. Dex. Love it. What a cool name. They're invasive. We didn't set them free, so... Hmm. wasn't our fault oh for, okay first of all if you were on close friends story we just, are actually just regular it was just our regular when we were on vacation in this horrible rural town in oregon we were talking about this morgan is like reading the drama of ferret gate and my dad <laughs> goes oh well you know what could have stopped that a good ferret with a gun which is so funny. Which is honestly like the joke of the year. Yeah. Like kudos to Aaron May because that is the funniest we, we shit I've merch, ever heard. Except it wouldn't it wouldn't sell. It would just be for us. That's incredible. That's so fucking funny. I absolutely lost my mind. We need to arm our ferrets. Yeah. It's just such a good joke on so many levels because that is what those people sound like. And also imagine <laughs> the right to ferret arms. Yeah. <laughs> They could hold, like, four at a time. (laughs) It's just, also, we were like, you know, clearly this place doesn't have great security. And we're like, oh, well, they should have a ferret standing at the door with a gun. Yeah, there you go. That'd fix it. That would help it. Like, bear arms for shorter. (laughs) What's the difference between a ferret and an otter? A gun. Some Otters water. can't have guns because they're in the water. The dampness level. Yeah. Yeah, the water will get on the gunpowder and then it won't work. Think of I've seen Pirates of the Caribbean. <laughs> Give the ferrets guns. <laughs> yeah, it's been... The, the But the best part is, like, there are people... There are, like, boomers, genuinely, yeah. on the Facebook post, being, like, sad to see what this world has come to. What a horrible example she's setting for all children and her children who are with her. And then there are people my age being like, at Bria, at whoever the person is, (laughs) tagging this girly pop, being like, how can you sleep at night, you monster? At Brienne of Tarth. That's her name. Yeah. Um... (laughs) <laughs> Which is so funny, because I, I don't think anyone my age is, like, sh- losing sleep over it. No. it. Should she do it? No. No. If you're an animal flipper, that's not ethical. I, it's, I'm not losing sleep over if it. If she's so, an animal I mean? flipper, I'm not losing sleep over it, but she should get in, like, really big trouble. Yes. Because that's a very stressful. I think that's the other thing is, like, I, I assume she stole the ferret because she has three kids and she can't really afford to buy her kids a pet and they want one. <laughs> you gotta say ferret drama. Yeah. Um, and then upon learning, potentially, that that's not what it is. Pets are so expensive after you own them. Yes, and I know that, okay? But I don't know this girl's story, and seeing her photos, I was like, maybe, like, you know, she doesn't have that much money. She can't give her kids anything that they really want, other than, like, food and water. And, now, you know what I mean? Was, no, it's a terrible, I love you so much. As someone who's never owned a pet before, I don't think you should necessarily be the voice on this. No, I'm saying, that's what I'm saying is I was like, well, I don't know her story, you know, but it's hilarious that everybody's getting in on it. Sure. 
And then obviously people in the comments know more about ferrets and pets in general. And then also we learned the potential lore that she's an animal flipper, which I didn't know was a thing people did. Yeah, you can <clears> flip <throat> a couch. You can't flip a ferret. I think if you're if your, you know, brother who is like irresponsible, got a dog, had the dog for two months, and then is like, never mind, I don't want a dog, you could take that dog, pay to train it, pay to get make sure it's like good vet stuff and then maybe make money off of that but if you're doing it over and over you're not putting time you wouldn't download a ferret you, you wouldn't know what I download mean? a ferret professional rehomer you wouldn't flip a ferret yeah even then like the premise of that there's no amount that you could sell an animal for that would be worth it at that point like if you're actually ethically taking care of an animal and caring for it there's no one's going to buy two thousand dollars and it wouldn't be you know that much but like i it, so uh, supposedly michaela supposedly what this girl this is like very allegedly because we've seen no proof of this we, at neither all neither of us know this girl i don't know this girl i don't know her story the people who do know her on the facebook people who say are saying these things they're saying either that they they're claiming to know her claiming that they know someone who knows her Aww. thank you so much mushroom face and they're saying that she has like taken animals from Facebook Marketplace for free and then later sells them on Facebook Marketplace, which is very stressful. Or she'll, I guess, steal them from pet stores. Apparently. I don't know if she's stealing pets from people's homes either. Oh, I don't think so. Did someone say that? Like, oh, no. Oh. I, that's what I'm saying. Uh, no, there's no way she's doing that. What you, What do you mean there's no way? Where does, where does the crime stop, Phoebe? You think she's like the wet bandit? She could be. I don't know. I don't know her, but she's guilty. Listen. <laughs> Bang the gavel. I'm not in the black ferret market, so I don't care how lucrative it is. Yes. Ferret grabber. That's what I'm saying. Or is she taking animals, like, from the street? Like, people where I'm from, and I'm not here to debate whether it's ethical or not, but people where I'm from, a lot of people have outdoor dogs and cats. It's not ethical. Hey, but what we're did not I just say? Well, I don't want to debate it, but I don't want people to think that we're, like, co-signing no, on No, but I'm saying all. that's not where I want the conversation to go. Okay, I'm hearing that. Stealing dogs out of the out of yards is super common. Yes. That makes sense. Dogs get stolen all the time. Thank you. Yeah. I don't... They get stolen by people, don't they? Mayhaps people who also steal ferrets from small business pet stores. You don't know. I don't know. We have no idea. I hear you, but I do not co-sign. Oh, my God. I'm so God. And he peed on them and dropped them. My friend's dog got, oh, because there's just a tiny dog on her neighbors, wouldn't give her back for days. That's what happened to George. Kind of. George got our... He ran away. Well, he didn't ran a, run away on purpose. He, he got, didn't ran away. He didn't ran away on purpose. He got scared, and then he ended he up... He was smaller. He was tinier. Yeah, he was tinier at the time. Or the ferrets are stealing the dogs. I want to be really clear. George was not an outside cat for any period of time, but he would just scream at the door until you would let him out, so he would occasionally get, like, supervised vibing with pals Yeah, also Bo time. would be out there smoking a lot. It's not like he was, like, no, this an is, outdoor... No, this is way more years ago than that. Yeah. Oh. Way before that. Sorry. No, it's okay. But anyway, he got scared and wandered off and ended up in our neighbor's backyard, and we didn't know that that was where he was, so George was gone for, like, three weeks. And then we found him. He was in our neighbor's backyard, like, underneath a grill, hunched down, because there was a dog that lived in the neighbor's yard. George got a call to adventure. Oh, my God. So my dad takes me, because George is dad's cat, because they have the same mannerisms. And so dad takes me, his, you know, presumably, like, 17-year-old daughter, right, He's, like, a scary white man, so he's trying to, like, not be a scary middle-aged white man, so he's bringing, like, a child with him. So we're like, hey, uh, I think your our cat's in your backyard. Can we get our cat from your backyard? We can just, like, walk around the side. And this girly pop, who is home with her child, her, like, toddler or whatever, is like, no, I'm not comfortable with that. And my dad's like, okay, our cat's been missing for, like, weeks and weeks, um... I need to get him out of your backyard. And she's like, no, you're not going into my backyard. And we're like, okay. <laughs> yes. So anyway, dad like broke through our, <clears throat> our backyard fence. And because I have anxiety, I was like, I'm not partaking in this. So I just like left. I just bolted into the house. 
In case the, the cat cops were called. Yes. But anyway, George is now fine. Yeah, a little dad crime. <laughs> He's less interested in going outside. Oh, Georgie? Yeah, yeah, no. Georgie, yeah. I think the thing is, and I've never been a cat, right? But they don't know about the world, right? Like, yeah. the only time they go out is when they go to the vet. So, like, it does make sense that they would yell at the door. Yeah. <laughs> Just some light trespassing. It was really messed up, though. Georgie was, like, super, super skinny, and then he... Just, like, could not stand still. Like, he was very, like, weird and, like, wired. He's great now. He sleeps for a long time. Yeah. Well, he had a very a stressful boy. couple of weeks. And oh he's still God. recovering. Yeah. Years later. He has trauma. Almost ten years later, if you were 17. Yeah, that's probably right. Yeah. <laughs> Cats get very annoyed at the concept there's a location they can't go. That's why Bob yes. loves to scream at our door. It's he his favorite He was screaming activity. when I came in here after making my sandwich. Yes. He's a silly baby. He thinks that this is his house, and he doesn't live here. The He has more house upstairs than we have down here. Yes. It's, like, much bigger. He has way more places he could go. He doesn't want to be there. He wants to be where he can't be. He's a menace. <laughs> Mira can't tell time. That's so true. Goodbye, Dorian. Bye-bye, baby. My cat demands that all the doors be open at all times. He is so aerial core. <laughs> the fucked up part is that my mom is up there vibing with Arwen, working from home. Bob doesn't even want to talk to her. Very capable of giving him snuggles. Yes. Bob He's not Anna, interested. You're her dad. <laughs> oh, it's so bad. He will open it himself and then just leave. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty much the other thing Bob will do. We have to shut all the doors to the other rooms when he does come down here because what was happening is he would figure out how to get, like, he would figure out how to get behind. And we, he'd go in the bathroom, get behind our washer and dryer because he's really skinny. Yes. And then he would get back there and scream and be like, who put me here? And then we made jokes about him being skinny, so we were calling him Bobby Hadid, which was pretty funny. Yeah, well, when he's fitting in small spaces, you have to call him Bobby Hadid. Yeah. Bob's a free spirit. Bob is a menace first, and I love him. But he's a menace, baby yeah. boy. Yeah, well, that's what he does. Baby, you guys are mean. He goes, he gets himself stuck somewhere. <laughs> God and forbid someone make a mistake. <laughs> God forbid I'd be bad at typing. I thought you did a good job. Thank you. The haters. Menace first, cat second. Truly. Yes. Y'all are so mean. George is an orange cat, which I think is very relevant. I think I'm also, no, that's okay, Seven. I know that. I think I'm going to stop, because right now I've been saying Arwen, a woman just built like that, has been her, like, cat parentheses identifiers. And I think I'm just going to change it to Arwen, the people's princess, because somebody sent that in a message, like, that she's the people's princess, and I was like, that is more correct. She literally, y'all, she's mean. They call her a man all the time. They he him the shit out of Arwen. And I think it's because they Can't think that Arwen means like Irwin. But she's named I after Arwen was a boy. She's named after Arwen the elf princess from Lord of the Rings. She is. That's what That's I'm saying. That's crazy cuz she couldn't defend herself against a butterfly. Yeah. I'm not a monarch is so <laughs> No, for real. Thank you, friends. All the time. They're like, I love that man. People also constantly... Arwen is the janitor from Sweet Life of Zack and Cody. Yes. That is why I thought that. I'll post a picture of Arwen being chonky and unhinged, and people are like, Bob looks so cute in this picture. Wrong. That's also me. Wrong. The first time I came to visit Phoebe's family when we were long distance, I couldn't keep straight which cat is which because there were six. Hey. And Dad made a... Uh, quickly on his little laptop computer and then printed out a picture of each of them with their names under it. And he handed it to me and he said, I think you need this. It was only like the third time I had ever met him. Maybe the second. That's what Aaron May's like. <laughs> yeah. Cat face blindness. They just all kind of look like cats the cat when menu. you don't live with them. The cat menu. Okay, anyway... Don't go to Joseph or Enterprise, Oregon. 
And do not ever rent a Ford Escape if you're getting a rental car. <laughs> oh. Hey, if there's only two of you, it's probably fine. My God. Oh my God. That car, y'all, it was so bad. She oh, must be a visual learner. <laughs> it's because all cats look the same to me. No. Listen. If I see someone who vaguely has Bob's colors, I'm like, what's Bob doing on this advertisement? That's true. I'd like to order a George, please. Anyway, go ahead. <laughs> the car was so bad. So here's what happened. My mom is a hot girl. Yeah. And so she just thinks that things will happen for her. To be fair, uh, and she's, she's right. And she's often right. Like, we joke about how literally, like, six months before we got the big house together, mom to dad was like, yeah, because we're going to be moving and we're going to get the big a big house. And, like, you know... Like, Phoebe and Morgan are going to live in with the, with us, and there's going to be, like, two separate areas. So, like, they can have a space, and we can have a space. Mom and, like, also was like, I don't want a yard. I don't want a yard that I have to clean. And we were like, Mom, if we're getting a big house, it's We're like, there's no such yard. thing as a house that doesn't like, have a yard that is also... She also was like, I really want a place where I can roller skate. That's really important to me. And, like, our garage is perfect for that. She manifested our incredibly strange house. She did. She did. And it was just so funny because she was like, that's what's going to happen. And my dad was like, there's no way that's happening so quickly. And she was like, yeah, it is. And then the, we're in this house now, which is yeah. great. But so she thought that once she got to the car, not dealership, but like Hertz. the rental place, yeah. the Hertz or whatever, that they were going to be like, oh my God, we should just upgrade you into a bigger car. Because what did she want? She wanted like a... The Highlander. She wanted a Highlander. Which is what we want in real life. Which as like a big car. Mom and I want a Highlander, but our husbands won't buy us one. You poor thing. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. You're, you're so discriminated against yes you poor thing it's hard being a woman yes with massive knockers yes so anyway they get the ford escape and it is a car that is supposed to seat five people it technically has five spots and we are five people and so what happens is it's mom driving dad in the front seat and then Bo has the tiniest ass out of any of us probably, but yeah. especially out of morgan and i and so Bo's gonna sit in the middle so what happens is we scrunch into the back seat, <laughs> and we're like, okay. And it's a six-hour drive. And it's a six-hour drive. Plus and, stopping. And so Bo's going to buckle in. And so they're like, huh, okay, well, let me buckle. So they grab their seatbelt, pull it out, and go. And when I tell you the, like, entrance, so, like, the, the seatbelt plugs in. The female part of the... I'm not calling it that. Belt. Sure. This okay. We'll say the seatbelt's hole. Yeah. The downstairs any of the seatbelt is inside of Bo's butthole, and Bo has like a tiny ass and no hips. So for it to be that far underneath Bo, that's a problem. Yeah. Okay. That's bad. So Bo's trying to like reach so that they can get it, and when I tell you for them to pull it out far enough that they can lean around and buckle, stop fidgeting. Lean around and buckle, it locks the seatbelt. Because no adult human is supposed to sit there. No. And I love my dad. I love him. But like three times. <laughs> it's like the second you sit down in the middle, the end of the seatbelt, the, the hole the seat of the seat, hole. the seatbelt hole is in your hole. It's trying to magnet into inside. It goes to your crack immediately. Immediately. No, that's what it does. Hole Terrible. Hole, hole in hole action. Meta hole. Hole to hole. Hole to hole. Which is terrible. Terrible premise for a seatbelt. So Bo's trying. We did not pay extra. We sure didn't. <laughs> Bo tries to do this three times and it just keeps locking. And they're just trying to like trick the seatbelt and do it like slightly less or like slightly slower. And my dad, who I love, is like. From the front seat. From the front seat. Is like, oh, just like pull it out farther and do it again. And we're like, Aaron, we actually don't need your input right now. Yeah. When it locks, the second you buckle it in, it like keeps locking. And so you can never stretch out again in your seatbelt. And sometimes you need to lean forward. And if it locks, you feel like super claustrophobic. That's what it's like. And he goes, no, if it locks, when it locks, it doesn't like stay locked. Trying to mansplain seatbelts. It's because to us. he hasn't sat in the back seat in years. It's because he's a dad, so he doesn't have to sit in this in the back seat like ever. And so then it's me and Bo at the same moment. He's also <sighs> thin. Hot. That's true. <laughs> Hollering at dad. 
were like, no, thank you, and you're done talking. And you're wrong, and you're done talking, and that was a crime. And do better moving forward, because stop saying what you're saying. He's just trying to mansplain seatbelts. Literally, and I love him, and he doesn't typically do that. No. He thought he was helping. He really did. He thought he was helping by saying the most obvious thing that could help us that was, in fact, just a lie. To be fair, I don't think the front seat seatbelts, either there's way more seatbelt to it before it does that, or they may not do it at all, because the reason that back seat seat seatbelts do that thing where once you pull it out enough, it locks and it stays locked, is literally for car seats. So you pull it till it's completely locked, you know, after it's through the car seat so that your car seat doesn't move. The way that a seatbelt does when you like lean forward if it's not locked. Does yeah. that make sense? Yeah. yeah so yeah. I, don't, I literally don't know if they do it in the front seat at all. No. Sorry. No, you're fine. You drove her. Um. But it was bonkers behavior. So there's that, and then it had a twisty prindle. Awful. Horrible design. It also the car like turned off every time you pushed on the brake, if you were stopped for too long. Yeah. At like a stoplight. It'll be like do do do. And then when you start going, it's like, do-do-do-do. Yeah. A, the, 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 like, the gear shift. <laughs> a curly frown would have been fun. No, like a knob. Yeah, like how you turn up the volume like in your car. Like a volume knob. That's how you turn it from reverse to neutral to drive. Yes. 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 Absurd. Yeah. Also, the emergency brake, we didn't put this in the video, but the emergency brake is like a button. And you click and unclick the button. Bad. And the, why would I want that? The, <laughs> Hi, Kyle. The best part about the emergency brake is I can yank on it or push on my foot to a certain degree. Yes. Till I feel it is emergency braked enough. Right. <laughs> yeah. No. Give me a giant stick. Ten years of muscle memory. Get rid of it. <laughs> oh, my God. No, literally, um, Co. It was, like, right by your leg. And it probably, like, would be kind of hard to, like, bump it i'm sure the but car what, would just make a terrible noise what like, wouldn't be hard is if you accidentally like like hit it with your hand as you're reaching for your drink yeah because it's right next to the cup holder speaking of which terrible cup holders it had the two in the front that were like fine and then the ones in the side of the door were like literally like half cup holders. they were like half crescents oh my god it was so bad it was like when the moon is so at half bad. mast it was awful Terrible. So anyway, we're in this car for a total of 12 hours, but six hours there, six hours Well, back. more than that, because we were also driving in town. That's true. Not for super long, but... Very true. And so that was already where, like, strong start to the trip. Strong yeah. start. So we finally get there, and we're like... And we had already eaten, like, a, at least once. Yeah. And then we're like, cute, let's get dinner at this place in, like, Enterprise or Joseph or, like, wherever. There's, like, it's, it's like a town of, like, 2,000 people. And I love... I love my little brother. Uh, they did not realize that if they were going to be dressed very scantily clad, they were going to get looks from people. And so the whole time it was like very obvious that the town was homophobic and transphobic. But we like go to get food at this place. And there's some, for whatever reason, a 14 year old girl is like the host. Like she's not going to be our server, but she's like in charge of seating no, people. No, she, she could not have been more than 14. And the entire restaurant is like outside. And it's 90 degrees. And it's in the sun and we're pale as shit. So like I have to be in the shade, especially if we're going to be there for like 45 minutes. Like I would just be uh, crisp. Like, burnt to a crisp dead. And they have, like, some of the tables have, like, little umbrellas so you can be in the shade. But they're not doing anything because of the angle of the sun well, right no, now. Well, no, no, the other ones. Not any of the open ones mm. would would have been, the umbrella would have helped us. So yes. she's like, is this fine? And it's like, probably you can't sit there because it's so hot because it's been baking in the sun. And I'm like, oh, we really need a shaded table. Like, we can wait. Like, I don't mind waiting. Yeah. But we really need one in the shade. She and she was like, wait. um, hold on. And she, then she puts us at this other table where half of it is in the shade and half of it's in the sun. And she was like, what about this? And I was like, okay. Because we're all really hungry. Yeah. We also weren't going to say anything shitty. Also, it's like not really this girl's fault. No, but she's, built the she's like outside. chewing gum and she's like, um, okay, hold on. And I was like, okay. Which again is fine. No, but it is, it does add to the comedy of it for it, sure. Uh, it, it very much does, yeah. <laughs> it was so bad and they're just like this one choose who died okay there's just like a lot of like flies also yes it's like the town is run by bugs 
I don't know. It was like, and and that that just kept happening. Where just about anywhere we ate, it was like they only had outdoor seating. Yes, we only ate at one restaurant where you could sit inside. Yes, actually two. Sugar Time Bakery was very oh, cute. True. I forgot it was. A the people who ran Sugar Time Bakery were adorable, non stressful, very nice to us. It was only like old ass women there. We also went to this Mexican restaurant that was definitely like run by like a very cute Mexican family. And when I tell you. It was the whitest Mexican food. I think they're catering to their audience. I think they're to catering to I'm their... I'm not complaining no, about no, 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 But yes. But like nothing was seasoned at all. Morgan's burrito had like canned chicken in it. It was definitely like wet canned chicken. You know how it smells when it comes out of the can. Um, and they sprinkled some cheese on it. And then they heated it up in the microwave. Like it was not... It was not on a grill. There's no way. No. It was like the most stark white burrito I've ever seen. It was a quesadilla. But... Quesadilla. He wasn't even crisp. Sorry, I meant to say tortilla is what I was trying to say. Very strange. Just everything was strange. There was also all of these weird shops that had like... This was not in the South. No. This was in Joseph, Oregon. Yes. Absolutely, to yes. To be clear. No, 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 no. Yeah, So it sorry. is not normally super hot. However, I think no. it's just bold to have an all outdoor restaurant at all anywhere. Yes. But there was also all of these weird shops <laughs> that had like little like Buddha figurines and like smudging kits and like crystals with like little feathers on a stick. And I was like, I have not seen one person of color here. It feels very inappropriate for there to be like smudging kits. Yes. It was... Do they close in the winter? What a great question. It was so rough. Appropriation station! It That's was what it should have been called. So rough. They also had, like, one million different, like, indigenous, like, um... Art. Like, statues yeah. and, like, art and, like, other it's things It's because like the that. town is named after, like, Chief Joseph, who, who sure. apparently was, like, the leader of, like, their original, like, people who lived there. Yeah. So they were like, we'll have lots of statues. Of Everyone in people. this town is racist, though. For sure. Like, there's no way that they're Tons not. of flags that say, don't blame me, I voted for Trump. Yes. All over. My dad, who, like, and I, he, you know, is a, is a cisgender middle-aged white man. We went to go rent a boat. And so we didn't, like, go in with dad and mom. But, like, obviously, like, the people who are renting out the boats can, like, see us all get out of the car together. Um, and my dad literally thought they weren't going to like let us rent a boat. He was like, their vibes were rancid. I thought they were going to be like, we don't let lesbians rent boats here. Like we're not fucking doing that. And I was like, Oh, so the Florida of Oregon, <laughs> they didn't say that. And it was fine. And we rented the boat, but it was just like, everybody was weird and standoffish, especially like the servers. It was like, they were very like cold and off put by us. And then the second we like said something nice or were nice to them, it was like they were, like, surprised yeah. that, like, liberals were, like, chatty and interesting and, like, fun to talk to. Also, there it was, like, the first girl that we had as a server, mm. like, wasn't really nice to us until, like, after we had paid and she got the tip. And then my dad, after the fact, was like, I bet old people never fucking tip here. So I bet it keeps surprising people that we tip well. Yeah. Because we are liberal. It was wild. Not in my neighborhood. Oh my god. Yeah. It was it was so much. It was so strange. It was just like very 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 strange vibes. It was yeah, it was just a strange place. Yes. And the food, none of the food was like great. horrible, but none yeah. of it was great except we went to this one place that had the best french fries I've ever had. Oh my god, life. those french fries are amazing. They're like those like they're like battered <clears throat> french fries. Yeah, I don't Ugh. know. They were so good. They were so good. Oh, it's an ad. Heyo. Yeah. It's when people are shocked that I am nice. Yeah. Yes. I don't know. The mini golfing was the best part. That's true. But it was literally run by 14 year olds. Yeah, it must be. I mean, they're, they're probably 16. I feel like most, place, most places you can work at 16. But. Yeah. Like most. Sorry. I mean, like most states, they let you start working at 16. They looked like babies is the point, But though. yes. Like absolute children. The None of the children who were working were mean to us. Yeah. Yeah. They were mostly all just like very... They were bored, if anything. Bored. Yeah. Also, my dad won mini golf. And when I tell y'all, he was so high and was holding his little ice cream He kept cone. forgetting which ball was his. 
after making fun of Bo for picking a ball that was a different color than like their putter or whatever, their club. Yeah. It was so fucking, he kept on trying to take my ball. And then he, on two different holes, he got a seven, like did so terrible. And he still won mini golf because every other time that he did it, it was a like hole a two in two or a, or a hole in one. It was hilarious. But like he literally is like stoned out of his mind, holding his little ice cream cone with his little putter. And he's like, like he's doing all these like silly dances. And that one was a hole in one as he's holding his ice cream cone. It was so funny. It was hilarious. We had the I best time. I can't play mini golf. I get too many competitive. <laughs> Dad's the only one of us, I feel like, who isn't competitive at yes, all. And yeah. he, he was like, we were like, you won mini golf. And he was like, I don't care. <laughs> he I'm was not competitive. Okay. <laughs> he was like crazy. If I'd have won, you'd still be hearing about it. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And then him commenting. Yeah. Huh, who won mini golf? He's so silly. He's so silly. He's a silly guy. Secretly, he framed a little piece of paper. <laughs> I still have it. It's in there. What did the paper say? It said for fun, but yeah. spelled like foreskin. I guess spelled like a four it's on golf. It's because the green, yeah. I think the green is called for four. F O R E F U N. Yeah, or foreplay. That was not foreplay. No, that's what I'm saying. It's also spelled like foreplay. Oh. Yes. Four is a golf word. Yeah. Okay. No, <laughs> it was spelled like foreskin. I saw that. <laughs> My clumsiness and highness cancel out and make me an athlete. Yes. <laughs> yes. It was really fun, though. That was definitely the most fun part. I think we should do things like that more as a family. Like, we should go bowling or, like... Yeah. The thing about mini golf, though, is you can be, like, outside and kind of away from people. Yeah. And with bowling, you can't guarantee that they won't sell the little, like, lane next to you. Yeah. That's true. Who's your putt hole? Oh, my suck ass. No. Yeah, I'm not great at bowling. I'm I, so I want the little rails up if I'm bowling. The little... What do they call them? Like, guardrails? Yeah. That sounds right. Yeah. Mm, I'm hinting that's right. Bumpers. bumpers. Thank you. Nice. Thank you. They got the bumpers. They got that fun slide you can use. Oh, my God. We do this thing. This is not super related, but um, a, like a year ago, like every now and then on TikTok, I get like news bloopers on my TikTok and we'll share them with each other because they're always funny. Yeah. So we go to, we'll like get the other one and be like hey i've got some news bloopers did you want to watch them and then we started calling them just noopers to shorten it hey i know we're uh, not we're not discussing oh it you yet. hit it i did That's yeah. Why. yeah 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 um and so then i started getting not just news ones but like like it'll be like america's funniest home videos like i so pale i don't remember i so pale i don't know what's happening. it must be a news blooper it must be um, but it, yeah, it'll be, and we're, so we call them human bloopers. Yes. And so we start calling them hoopers. And then every now and then I get baby specific ones. So then we're, we're back to bloopers. Back to bloopers. Yeah. The gay Mount Everest one, but he's gay. <laughs> I mean, sorry, he's gay. He's blind. <laughs> but he's gay. My favorite one is where the man goes, check your panties. A new thing says that rice, and he goes, I think it's supposed to be pantries. <laughs> Just check your panties. <laughs> They're so funny. Don't check your panties. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, he's gay. He's blind. <laughs> Let me see if I get blind. Sorry, he's gay. He's blind. <laughs> <laughs> he's gay. Sorry, he's gay. <laughs> stop it, stop it, stop it. <laughs> oh, yeah, the Australians who are like, <laughs> what do they say? Stuff summer? But I think they mean fuck. But I guess in Australia they say stuff. I mean, he's gay. Excuse me, he's blind. <laughs> <laughs> Stuff, Summer. <laughs> oh my god! I have not seen. Get I your have pride. not heard. Get your pride up, slurs. That's funny though. That's so funny. <laughs> he's gay, sir. Okay, me, similar to this. Have Why? you guys seen that Pete Davidson interview? I guess Phoebe hadn't seen it till yesterday. Oh But my it's like he's god. on like a podcast or something or a radio show. And he's talking about when Donald Trump hosted, boo, Ooh. SNL. 
And Pete Davidson is like, what people don't know is he can't read. Like, he can't read. And they, we had written a sketch for him that we ended up not using where him and his daughter go to Disney World or Disneyland. And he, the line is supposed to be like, they're ending it. And he's like, all right, let's get out of here. Turkey legs? Like, they're going to go get turkey legs. But he read it as, let's get out of here, turkey legs. <laughs> <laughs> so then Morgan and I would call each other turkey legs. <laughs> So now we've been calling each other the turkey legs. Round of sanctimonious. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so oh, God. Did y'all see that he might get um, sued by Fulton County Jail for seven million dollars because for using his mugshot for merch? Because you're not allowed to use your mugshot for merch. I hate that man. <laughs> I hate that man. I, I hate a bad that day. man. That's a completely normal name for your child. Yes. Turkey legs affectionate. Yes. The new version of sugar tits. Turkey legs. That's so funny. <laughs> it's cute. It's cute. It's affectionate. It's cute. It's cute. Well, it is funny because we, when talking about each other's legs, will say, give me your drumstick. Yeah. Or like, give me your chicken wing. So turkey legs is kind of perfect, actually. You can put hats on your horse in Stardew. I did not know that. Oh, I did know you can do that. On one hand, I hate cops getting money. On the other hand, on yeah, I don't think hand. I don't think any Etsy shops would get sued because, like, no. an Etsy shop selling something like that is making what five hundred dollars, a thousand dollars. It's also covered for use in parody. Yeah. So I think you just can't genuinely use it. Pitch their tents. Their That's, That's so funny. That's incredible. One time, my uh, grandma, the only one who we go to her house for Thanksgiving, and she does, she prays. I mean, this like, like you know, three Thanksgivings ago, and like, I think of it every year. She's like, who wants to say the prayer? And it's only ever her. But right. anyway, she said like, she said breast instead of blessed. Nobody laughed, but the first We thing, were being so brave. The car door shuts as we leave, and everyone was like, Did you hear her say breast? She said breast. That was so funny. It was like, may our daily bread be breast or something. Yes. Instead of blessed. And she's right. And Phoebe and I are holding hands, and we're like squeezing each other. Yes. Oh, shit. Should we talk about the titty bar? <gasps> I forgot about the titty bar. Oh, my God. Change it. Change it to titty bar story. You're going to want to hear this. So sorry, everyone. All right. I'm going to set the scene. So me and Phoebe and our friend Elliot all have tickets to Tessa Violet on Friday night. Um, so we <laughs> drive there. And the reason we leave, like, super early is because, like, we're trying to eat dinner as close to normal dinner time as possible. But the yes. problem is that the concert doors open at 7. And it's in Portland, so we need to, like, if we were just going straight to the concert, we need to leave here at 5.30. Yes. If there was, like, no traffic. Um, and then there's also, like, the fact that it takes forever to park in Portland because there's nowhere to park. Yes. And then also we needed to, like, get food on the way there so that we can try and eat dinner, like, at, as close to the actual dinner time as possible and not at, like, 3 p.m. Mm -hmm. um, so Elliot gets here and we leave. Our, listen, I promise we're going to get to books. <laughs> we promise. leave our house around like 4.45. We start going. We get Taco Bell, all this stuff. My husband. I get a Baja Blast. Who always has to pee. It's it's caffeine. It's caffeine and we're going to be up really late to see Tessa Violet. And I was right. And Francis Forever was opening. Yeah. And I knew. Hello. It, I knew that was how it was going to happen and that's what happened. Yeah. So sorry for drinking a soda. So we have driven the hour and a half to Portland. We can't find anywhere to park. And Phoebe's like, I have to pee. I have to pee so bad. I'm going to piss in the car. I have to pee so bad. Um, and we're like, okay. So some places in Portland, you get there, and it's like every single place is open 24 hours, and there's a bathroom every other shop. Yeah. And then some places you go to Portland, and there is absolutely nothing open within like a 10-mile walk. And we're not parking somewhere else. closed or like out of commission or. And it's an hour before the show, like the doors open. Yes. So like we're absolutely fucked. So I'm like, where am I going to pee? So like, we go like the entire two blocks where the concert's going to be, seeing if there's any business, even if it's one you have to pay like buy something see if anyone has a bathroom 
nobody does everything is either no longer open like it's permanently closed or it's just like closed because it's friday night and they closed at five yes things like that except one place it's the titty bar it's like marty's titty marty's topless bar yes or Mary or something. Yes. And I'm like, I've never been to a topless bar. And then... I didn't know it was like a strip club. I didn't either. Did I, y'all know that? I we I presumed that topless bar meant like it's a re, it's a restaurant, yeah. except everyone's topless. I th- yeah, I thought it was like the bartenders are topless. Yeah. I thought it was like Mary's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's definitely the one that we went to. There's, no, there's nothing else. And so Elliot and I have never even been to a strip club. Yeah. And we're both transmasculine and... You know, Small. just and gay and just trying our Tiny. best. And so Morgan, our little pink haired menace, is like, let's go to the topless bar. Throws I'm like, the bar oh open. no. That topless bar is the only place open. Uh, yeah, I thought it'd be like Hooters. I keep saying that. And then old people, being my grandma and my dad, stop me in the store and they go, that's not what Hooters is. And I'm like, I didn't say that's what Hooters is. No, I mean, like, like Hooters, a la Hooters. Except it's, it's the just Hooters regular, girls had no tops. but there's no tops on. I just thought it was regular with no tops. So, anyway, pop open the door. Can you do the music? <laughs> it's yeah, like the most it. dimly lit. You do the so- you do words, and I'll do the background. It is like they're playing like normal <laughs> songs, but like okay, really on. slow and really scary, like a soundscape. It's not sexy. No, it's not sexy. It's just slow. It's just, it's like a song in slow motion. It's a very weird. So I open the door, which by Awful. the way, they have everything like blocked. It was a different dimension. Blacked out. Yes. Because they don't want like 12 year olds looking in. There's a lot of like no phones, no phones, no phones. And I'm like, yeah. oh, that's fair. Like I wasn't gonna. I wasn't like, gonna take my phone out. Yeah, get your tits out to this. Um, But we open the door and then this guy stands up, clearly thinking like, I guess maybe he'd have to check our IDs, looks at us and then sits back down. So I guess he realizes we're, you know, 30. Yes. Um... So then... (laughs) The titties were joyful. Yes. This girl, this woman... First of all, it's a stage that's like the size of our desk. Oh my, it's like a postage stamp. Yeah. And And she smiles so big at us. She's glowing. She looks amazing. She's so beautiful. Her breasts are incredible. She's amazing boobs. Oh my God. She was a star. There's like one man sitting in front of her. Yeah, and everyone else is sitting at the bar on like the other side kind of. But the whole thing is built like a shotgun apartment. So like... To get from one end to the other, there's only, like, two feet of space, and you can just go. And then on one side, there's the bar, and on the other side, you're sitting basically on the stage. Yes. The tiny, tiny stage. So this woman is this, like, beautiful, glowing, effervescent light of, like, her boobies are out, and she's lovely. Everything else, heinous. Everything else about this space is heinous. So what happens is, because it's, like, this little, like, shotgun space, it's, like, I have to go straight to go to the bathroom. It's like there's like this much space. And when I tell y'all, there is a man that is no less than 240 years old. He's the oldest person I've ever seen in real life. Hey, and I'd like to say we respect old people. Yes, it's not about that. That's not the problem. It's not about that. Bo said it was reanimated corpse night at the titty bar. And I think we're (laughs) going to make shirts that say that because that was exactly what it was. This man, he's got his little cane out at a 90 degree angle. He is a skeleton. He should have been dead 15 years ago. And he is moving slower than a snail. And he's taking up the entire very he tiny walkway. He has to walkway. use the whole two feet because he's also holding onto a chair and then like his little cane in front of him. And I have to the piss. Keeper. I have to piss so bad. So bad. So I'm literally just like vibrating behind this man waiting for him to like adjust enough as he moves forward for me to like pop around him. Okay. And so I'm like, fuck. And I make it. Okay. I get to the bathroom. I don't know if y'all have ever been in a strip club bathroom. I had not. And the vibe of the, um, the, the club is obviously like sexy for men. So it's like very like darkly lit. It's so like it it's so dark I thought it was a problem. Literally Prince Philip. You can't see anything, right? And then I open up this door and it is the most godforsaken fluorescent light. 
It's like they said, if we're going to put a lock on this door, this needs to be the most unsexy area anyone has ever entered, which is completely valid and is fine and I appreciate it. But it was like, good <sighs> God, Jesus Christ. So I pee frantically, get Jim done. We get out of there, close the door. And this man, he has just barely made it to the men's restroom. Yeah. By the time me and Elliot are done peeing. Yeah. And have exited. Yeah, he's just gotten to the bathroom at the back by the time that yes. yeah, the, they peed. And it was like f- three feet, to be clear. It was like six feet, but yes. Yes. And again, I I, I don't care. It's not that I care that he was there. I just can't. It's, it's mostly the respect that I have yes. for this old ass man who was a hot 240 years old. He said, this is certainly my last 30 minutes on earth. Yes. I know where I have to be. It's the titty bar. It was bonkers. Absolutely bonkers. I have no idea if you can show your titties as a customer. I would not to the people who were there. I'll tell you what. No. But I am going to I am gonna work on a, my new project. And my project is I'm going to make a gay strip club for gay, for, for gay people. Yeah. And it'll be, the prime time will be during the daytime. Full of joy. Full of joy. The lights will not be so fucking dark. They'll be, I mean, like, you know, I understand it's not like, it shouldn't be like Target. Yeah. It doesn't need to be so dimly lit though. We could just do soft lighting. Right. You know? I want the music to be fun. I want there to be brunch. Yeah. I want it to be... Vegetarian options. Yeah. There'll be plenty of vegetarian options. That's City Target. Everyone will be nice. Yeah. We can also kick people out based on vibes. Yeah, yeah. I will invest in this business. It'd be great. A little fruity strip club. Because, like, what I want is people... Because there are people who love being strippers. And I'm happy for them. Yeah. I want to see them. And I want them... There's going to be... Instead of a drink minimum, there'll oh, be... we will be going to the vegan strip club at some point. Uh, I want to go so bad. I hope it's that vibey. I know. I hope it's fun. What I want is to make a TikTok and be like, anyone here been to a strip club in Portland, particularly the vegan strip club? Yeah. Will I be the only gay person there? Because what, what the I want is to get a nice seat, park, see a bunch of titties, throw money, and be like, you're doing a good job. I, I love ho- this. I hope you like your job. I like that you're here. Here's some money. And I hope I'm the out. food's good. Yeah. Are there any queer strip clubs? Great question. No idea. Absolutely. Vegan strip club vlog? Well, you can't have your phone out. No. Which I do get. Yeah. Yes. That's what that's what I said the last time I told the story. I don't remember who. To Lemon, maybe? It must have been to Lemon. Being like, well, way more strippers than you think are gay. And I was like, no, I follow a lot on TikTok. And they're gay. I have to sneeze. I was going to say, it's a vegan. Men are afraid of being vegan. <laughs> Bless you. Yes. Get a sponsorship deal to be allowed to vlog and promote them. I should. Because I want more gay people to go to, like, sexy things. More fun for everyone, though. And while I appreciate that we are also trying to bring up, like, gay sober spaces, what I also, what I need now is gay, sexy places. Yeah. Yeah, Casa Diablo. I follow them on Instagram now. The only thing they really post, though, is, like, who's working. That's really cute. Which I was like, this is kind of crazy, but I guess that's very normal for a strip club to be like, this is the schedule. Candy goes on at nine, you know. Um, Diamond goes on at ten thirty. It'll either be all gay people or weird cis het hipster art dudes. Okay, well <laughs> I can't find it now. What Casa Diablo? Yeah. Oh, I follow them on mine. I don't know if we follow them on yours. I don't think we do. Gotta advertise. Gotta. Okay, are we ready for Hunger Games? I'm ready. Okay, Morgan, we're trying... uh, Something that is relevant about this is that my wife has seen all the Hunger Games movies, but she also, and I love her, things fall out of the folds of her brain sometimes. So I... I am fairly certain there's a bunch of things in Mockingjay that she has no idea about. Yeah. She is not going to remember. So we're talking about the first Hunger Game right now. The first Hunger Game book. The book. And I guess movie. We can compare it to the movie. And then we'll talk about the Catching Fire. But we cannot talk about Mockingjay. Yeah. 
And Phoebe is reading... Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. The new one, yeah. I have three hours left. It's incredible. Um, Which I have no idea what it's about or anything. And Phoebe didn't know much going into it. But I am one chapter into Mockingjay. Yes. Um, Okay, so the first Hunger Game book. Yes. Uh, I gave it four stars. It was really good. I, as Phoebe said, I don't ever remember things. So, like, we, I got to the part where, like, the, they're explaining, like, Tesserae, I presume is how you say it. Oh, I don't think they talk about it in the movie, They like, do not talk all. about it in the movie at all. Yeah. Oh, my God. I can totally get into Akatar later. We'll do that in a minute. Um... But, yeah, so they're explaining, like, how it works, which makes way more sense. And I don't think they should have necessarily included it in the movie. It was just, like, definitely a question I had. Um, because, like, I think they say something about how, like, I think Gail, Liam, whoever, has a line about, like... Being in it so many times. Yes. Yeah, But has, they don't really ever explain it. Yeah, he has, like, the most possible times to be entered in it, basically. Yeah. Um, but the way that it works, I'm sure you'll remember better. But it's, like, from the time that you're 12 to 18, yeah. just being that age, your name gets put in the pot once yeah. every year, right? Yes. So it's, like, when you're 12, it's only in there once. When you're 13, it's in there twice. Yeah. When you're 14. It's in there three times. 13. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, so the least you can ever be in there is six. Yes. By the time you're 18. By the time you're 18. And then if every for every member of your family, you can take out Tesserae for one member of your family. And then that is like, it's like grain and oil or something for a yeah. person for a year, which is like not true. That's not actually how much it ends up being. But it's what they say it but is. But it's what they say it is. Yeah. So because Gail has, how many siblings? It's like five or something? Three? Anyway, he can take yeah. it out for his mom and then his siblings as well. So yeah, at age 12. Yeah, he doesn't 12, have a dad and Katniss doesn't have a dad. They're, yes. They're dead. Yes. They had them. Yeah. Which I think they tell you in... I didn't know Gail's dad was dead until the last one. Then never mind. They might say something about it in the Hunger Games, and I just don't remember. They, they, both of their dads died but in they the, talked in about the it same like mine fire. accident, yeah. which isn't like super relevant information. Three siblings, thank you. He does, he does. Yeah, they don't tell you about Gail. I don't even think you see Gail's family in the movie. No, I don't think which so. Which you really don't see much of them in the book either, like a little bit. In Hunger? Or in, yeah. In Catching Fire, when he gets really hurt, you see his mom. Yeah. Because she comes and is like, oh, man, they'll con sucks. They'll continue to be relevant and get more relevant. Oh, that's true. I haven't read the third one yet. Yes. Um, he has too many dang siblings. Yeah. So that was the first thing that I was like, this is nice. Okay, what I will say, clearly, I mean, every time you make a movie from a book, they're going to leave stuff out. At least the first two books that I've read, everything that I've learned that they left out, yeah. I completely get, like, that while it's, like, fun context and lore i do yeah. get why they why they left it out because obviously if they included everything they would be like eight hours long yeah no i i feel like the movies are like a really good adaptation i don't love jennifer lawrence but like no i, I don't love she's, i don't love liam hemsworth either no if she's literally supposed to be 16 yes but i maybe that's it maybe they were like it'd be too hard to watch actual children kill each other so mm. And it's different post-2020. Sure does. Yeah, we watched the three. That was the first time I ever saw them was during quarantine. I love Josh Hutcherson. I'm excited to see him I in the him. Five Nights at Freddy's movie. He's so cutesy. Um, he is all of our baby girl. Yeah. I love him. The most baby girly. Also in The Hunger Games, I feel like they do a really good job. Because I had known, because Phoebe was giving commentary when we watched the films, that Katniss in the book is, like, not really that into Gail. And so I thought I was going to read the book, and she was going to be like, I'm not like other girls. I don't care about boys. And I was going to be like, I don't fucking care about this. I'm always into boys. I can't relate. And I don't feel like that's how it's written at all. No. I think it's very obvious that it's like she has too many other things to stress about that quite literally she doesn't have space in her brain. She's so disinterested, <clears throat> but it's, like, very genuine, and she also cares about him a lot. Yes, and she's not, like... He's so annoying, necessarily. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I didn't care about Rue. I cared a lot. I also was raised with, like, as an older sister to a little sister. So I think I have different feelings about Rue than, like, Morgan would. I felt like we didn't know enough about her Ugh. for me to care that much. So, like, I didn't cry. I was like, that sucks. You know, obviously I didn't want her to. I mean, I knew she was going to die, but yeah. I didn't want her to. Um. <laughs> yes. 
Uh, she did. I love that. But I, him. you know, I was like, that sucks. But also from the get go, everyone has to die but one, right? So I was like, you are like, I, I don't know. Morgan also reads like horror, horror. So yeah. you know, I think that is relevant. Yeah, it takes a lot for me to be like really sad about something. Mm-hmm. Um, I do feel like it was. I felt that's exactly it. I felt like it was sadder in the movie mm. because you could hear like Katniss scream, and you could see like. The moment that they're like having together and she's dying. That's the thing that pisses me off in the movies because she's not supposed to. Like, she's not supposed to, because you have to be like strong for like the, which I, I don't know. Like, I guess they couldn't have. She also gets way more gifts in the book than in yeah, the movie. Yeah, she only like, gets one way I think, in the more. Movie. Yeah. What if I was like justice for Kato? Kato's the one that she kills, who kills Rue, right? E- Stanley no. Tucci's great. The guy Whoa. from American Horror Story. Marvel's the one who kills Rue. There's no one named Marvel. Sorry, you don't know that that's his name, but it is. Yeah. Oh. Um. Because when that happened, I dropped the series. Whoa. Wow. Serious. It's really good. Stanley's perfect. He's the perfect Caesar. Yeah, the boy from District One. Yeah. A horrible name. Isn't it from District Two? I thought Cato and Glimmer were District One. I don't remember. I could. Glimmer's a great name. Yeah. Yeah, Kato's third place guy. Oh, that's right. Yeah, he's the one who gets With the, launched by Oh my the, god, that's the other thing. So the they have the dogs in the movie, for sure. Yes. That, that is like the end. The mutts, but they you don't know that they have the eyes. No, they don't say anything about mutts in the movie at all. They just say Mockingjay, and that's, you're just supposed to know that's what it is. And the Tracker Jackers. They do say Tracker Jacker. Yeah. But they don't explain that they were like made by the Capitol. Yeah. I presumed watching the movies that it was like just the, it's, a, they're in like another world. So they've got other things. The Mutts are terrifying. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. Well, they also, I know that they made the arena. Yeah. So like I thought that the Tracker Jackers, like they made for the arena. Oh, wow. But in the book, unless I misinterpreted it, they did make them, them and they were in the real world. Yeah, which they were During the revolution. They right? weren't supposed to get... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have to poop, but you can keep talking. <laughs> Sorry. Um, the mutts are so scary in the They're books. They're terrifying. So in the... Uh, the, like, end scene, yeah, where the, the little puppy dogs are, like, absolutely eating the shit out of Kato. And it goes on for so long. Um, and that sucks. But I also was like, okay... Come on, get, go, that's fine. I'm ready for him to die and for y'all to get to the end. Um, but maybe it's because I'd already seen the movie, so I was like, I know how this is going to end. I have no idea, Aaron. I'm the wrong person to ask. Um, maybe he has to poop at the titty bar. Yes. Uh, when they were describing how, like, the, excuse me, the mutts at the end of the first book look like all of the contestants who died... I feel like I'm still confused about it, or at least I was until I read the second one, because she has, like, a line where she's, like, just like, we did, yeah, just like, uh, they made the mutts look like the other contestants, you know, these things, like, sound like our family, yeah, and I was like, oh, because when I was reading the first one, I thought that they really took, because the little claw thing comes and takes their body, right? I thought they really took the old contestants who were dead. I think they used the tribute DNA in the mud. That's my question. Did they? I don't know what Annihilation is. I think you're meant to think that in the first one, because I did too. Okay. Well, that makes me feel better. Because I was like, (coughs) are they actually that? Like, are they actually, because she has a line about, like, how one of them looks like they recognize her, I think. Presumably there's a Katniss and a PETA dog, too. Do you think? It's definitely to at least be a mind trick for them. They sculpted their face to look like their faces. PETA dog. Interesting. Well, in the capital, like, when they're all getting ready for the Hunger Games, they take all kinds of things, right? And they put the little tracker in them. Okay, okay, okay. Or if they just use science. 
I never think not once in my life. They had numbers on their collars. Is that true? Oh my god, the other thing I feel like that like is really well explained in the book Hunger Games, but like didn't it's not the, I don't know what else they could have done in the movie to make it come across, but like the fact that Katniss is like there must be a water source near me because Hamish won't send me water. So like he must know that I'm really close to it. Um and then also her being like, "Okay, if I kiss Peta and I'm all like romantic with Peta, then I get more soup." And I was like, this makes sense. I always imagine the colors look like Scooby-Doo's. I need everyone to know. Almost 100% of the time, if I am reading a book and there's like any sort of like monster that they're like describing that has even the slightest bit of like potentially like a dog-like quality, I am picturing the monsters from the first live action Scooby-Doo film. I'll pull up a picture in case you've forgotten what they look like. So, like, even though I've already seen the movie where I know what they made the, the mutts, like, look like. And they, I think they just look like little puppy dogs. Okay, horrible photo. This is what I'm picturing. Okay, do we not have better photos of them? These guys. This is what they look like to me in my head. <laughs> Hairless cat dogs. So we also recently-ish, in June, but we both read, we listened to together, um... Bird Box, and then the sequel to Bird Box. And they're much more uh, committed to the idea that, like, the things that you can't look at are monsters in Bird Box, the book, and also definitely in Mallory, which is the sequel. Um, and I am 100% just picturing those monsters. There is a Bird Box sequel. There's a Bird Box sequel book. They're supposedly making a Bird Box sequel movie. I don't know how it's affected by, like, all the strikes and stuff. But I, I don't think it's based on the book. I think it's a completely different story. Because it's called, like, Bird Box Colombia or something. Bird Box Brazil. It's, like, Bird Box and then, like, a town or town. Like, a city or a country. I think it came out. Did it? Bird Box Barcelona. I was so close. Twenty twenty three film. Oh no. In Spain. Oh no. It's in Spanish, I think. I have not it has only a two star rating. That's not good. For the longest time I thought Hamish was gonna turn out to be Katniss's dad. Okay, that would have been really spicy i think if i had read it as a kid that is also a thought i would have had that kind of makes sense though because she well i thought she looked a lot like her dad though she just didn't look anything like her mom yeah spicy um i saw it and it was so good interesting all right uh hey which is woody harrelson yes 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 um I, yeah, so the, the other thing about seeing the movies first is every time I read about a character, I definitely picture their actor from the film. Um, and then, oh, the other thing that I was going to say is I don't think, do they actually put the berries in their mouth in the film? I don't know. I don't remember. They definitely do in the book. And yeah, in the book, they definitely, they don't bite down, but they like put it in there. They got like scrape them off their tongue. Yeah. Yeah. Also, does that other random girl die from eating the berries in the book in the movie? Foxface. Yeah, I think she does. I don't remember that at all. They are about to in the film. Yeah, she does. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just remember him like Josh Hutcherson gathering them and then Katniss fucking yelling at him and being like, "These are Nightlock, you fucking idiot!" And then he's like, "Sorry." And I was like, "Okay, you're yelling so much." <laughs> 
I think the other thing, though, is that I can't relate to Katniss. You know? They just sort of find her dead. That sounds right. I remember that. I remember them looking at her. Yeah. Um. And then I'm oh, playing. Oh, interesting, both. Flux. Huh. On the berry matching game thing. Oh, I don't remember that. Huh. <laughs> Crowley from Supernatural. I've never seen Supernatural. That's not Supernatural. Yeah, I thought Crowley was in the Good Omens movie. Show. Yes. I think that's what they meant. Or is it just a normal British name, though? He's, he's, that's, he's that man who you get confused with David Tennant. Yeah. Oh, then I don't know. Sorry. What is Satan called in Supernatural? Sorry, I'm so sorry. Two separate characters. They both have Crowley. I would have never known. I had Alice and Rosalie mixed up for the first three books. Stop. That's cuckoo bananas. That's hilarious. That's so funny. They're very different. The first three books. There's only four books, baby. Perky Reed is blonde to me. That's fair. Oh. I, I can hear that. that. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think if I have any other thoughts about the first one. We can shift it too. You just read it. I know. Well, I'm seeing. I'm trying to think if there's anything else. In Gomans. Crowley, is it Crowley? I thought it was Crowley. I thought it was Crowley too. Azaria fail. Huh. Oh, Crowley? it's both. I'm not sure I recommend it. A lot of people say to hand and read them. That's too much work oh, for me. Oh, that's hard, yeah. Azira fail. Azira fail. Mm -hmm. Fail. Oh, fail. fail. Now, this is also hard because Seven's British, so. Yeah. Mayhaps what it's saying is not how I would say it. Anyway. No, you're right. Similar to this, when's the last time you guys watched the first Star Wars movies? The ones that came out in the 70s. Because they don't call her Leia hardly at all. They call her Leia. We watched them when we first moved to the big house, and I was like, have you guys noticed that they're only saying Leia? And then we Googled it, and it's true. Like some, some It's supposed to be like, different accents for different planets or whatever, but some of them call her Leah and some of them call her Leia. Yeah, they also switch between pronunciations for Han. Yeah, they do. I don't have enough hair for Leia buns, but they are really cute. Um, yeah, there were no rules. Morgan gave Catching Fire five stars. I did. Carrie Fisher, my beloved. Um, do you have anything to say about Catching Fire? It's my favorite one. I think it's so good. Is it your favorite movie? Uh, yeah. Of the Hunger Games ones. That is so funny. Of the Hunger Games ones. It's not like, none of those are like my favorite no, movie. No, 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 yeah. 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 I love Finnick. He's so cutesy. He's so cutesy. He's so fun. It's so good. Yes. Also, I feel like, okay, first of all, I, I love always, two Barkins cry. I call her Johanna always when I read it, and they call her Joanna in the movies. And yeah, if you call I was her definitely Joanna, reading it as fine. Johanna. Johanna, yeah. Johanna, Johanna. I think it was Johanna. Well, it's because Joanna's a normal name, and every fucking else in that, in that universe is named, like, Glimmer yeah. and Prim. Johanna. I also want to say, especially as we're talking about Catching Fire, Morgan is not going to remember any of the things that happened in Mockingjay, so try not to say any, like, spoilery things for Mockingjay. Yes, a little beach boy. He's so cutesy. So the way that Catching Fire... Hang on, I'll wait till that ad's over. I'll wait, I'll wait, I'll wait, I'll wait. Um, Joanna's so over it. Which I'm obsessed with. And then I also feel like she's way cuter in the book. Like, yeah. she's, like, much more girly pop-coded. Yeah. And she's kind of, like, she's, she's just like, so harsh. She's so angry in the movie. And yes, she's still angry in the book. Yeah. 
Like she, but like I don't know. Like I, that's all you see. In she's the movie like, oh my god, I love your dress. You look so cute, and she means it for real. Like she, I don't think she's being sarcastic. No, they made her kind of mean girl in the movie. Yeah. Um, the way that Catching Fire the book ends. Spoiler alert. Um, is literally like, what's his real name? His Gail. name's Liam. Thank you. Um, is literally Gail being like Katniss. There is no District Twelve. Which is a killer ending. Right. And I only know that because I saw someone say when they were younger, they used to always like read the last page of a book before they started it to see if it was like worth it to get to the end, which is a horrible, I'm not like other girls type of premise. Yeah. Um, you're just going to hurt Gail. your own feelings. <laughs> I hate Gail so but much. But anyway, and then they said they stopped doing it because of Catching Fire because the last sentence is him being like, there is no District 12. Yeah. Um, I can't believe I had to read There Is No District 12 and then wait for the next book. Listen, That's I, me with I wing. already read it when it was out, so thank God. Yeah. Kermit Glimmer Goof. <laughs> um, I, so I wouldn't say I like, it's not that I hate Gail. It's that I just really don't care about him. Um, at all. I, 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 th- you, I think your feelings may change. I, Yeah. I really hate Gail. I have seen the third movie. I hate Gail in the beginning of Catching Fire, though. I fucking hate him. Because him being... When he's like, I don't want to see you. A whiny little piss baby. Because, I'm sorry, his fucking girly pop, who he was obsessed with, like, she had to go experience trauma and kiss some boy in an arena. And he's like, Mwah. shut up. Yeah. He's also now 18 or 19 and she's yeah. 17. I fucking hate him. Yes. So like we can do a poll but everyone's going to say they hate Gail. I mean, you don't have to. If you don't hate Gail, then that's fine, but I disagree. Listen, Liam is very handsome, but the problem is I now also hate him because uh Miley because I love Miley Cyrus. The age gap and like the age gap is not horrible. Oh, no, it's like two years. In real life, is if an 18 and a 16-year-old date, and then they date when they're like 19 and 17 and 20 and 18, like, if they've known each other, obviously, that whole time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then, like, I don't think it's weird. What is weird is, like, them having that age gap and maturity gap and him being so, like, protective of her. Not in, like, a I want to protect you and make sure you're safe way. In, like, like possessive of her. He's so possessive. Because it makes total sense. I feel like his possessiveness is supposed to come from, like, them being best friends. Yeah. But to me, I just, I fucking hate him. I hate him so much. Gail read one rebellion Tumblr post and it made it his personality. Yes. Yes. He's incredibly self-centered, whereas Katniss is, like, incredibly, um... Not self-centered. He's, like, he has the same energy of, like, when some boy you know hears one thing about one person getting, like, some sort of injustice. And he's, like, I'm going to burn that, you know, bookstore down or whatever. And you're, like, okay, you can't do that. What you can do is, like, not shop there anymore. Yeah. Tell other people not to shop there anymore. Go to a protest. Like, you know, vote for people who would make sure that that bookshop doesn't, let people steal whatever you're against. You know what I mean? Don't and he's let them instead steal parents. Yes. And he's instead like, I, a grown, handsome white man, can change it all right now. And so he's like, I want there to be a revolution right now. And obviously that's what should happen. Okay, we all know that. That's what's gonna happen. But Katniss is like, well what about this? And what about this? And instead of him being like, well here's a solution to those questions you have, he's like, I won't answer them. No no I will instead just be angry and mean. He's super entitled in a lot of different ways. And Katniss spends like all of her time trying to make sure that the people around her are safe. I put in the years of friendship. When does the pussy come out? Yes. Yes. He's like, I can't believe nobody has thought of just fixing the problem before. He's exactly. It's just like very standard, like the worst boyfriend you've ever had behavior. I think we've all known a man like this. I think that's, yeah, I think that's why we all hate him so much. Yes. As an attack against him, exactly. And she has to, like, worry about him in the arena. Yes. She's, like, doing things. He's and, also like, just existing boring. And saying shit. And she's like, ugh. 
Glad I don't have to go back home. She's like, glad I'm going to be dead that way. I don't have to deal with my piss baby best friend being like, I can't believe you kissed that boy again. Boo. He also, he kissed her. And I think, like, if she had any feelings for him. (laughs) Yes, that's exactly it. The one voting no with the poll is my safe space. (laughs) No one voting no, sorry. Tomato, tomato, tomato. I fucking hate that man. I hate him! He literally is like... I fucking hate him! Do you think it was easy for me to watch you in the game? Yeah, shut up! And it's like, do you think it was easy being in the game? What the fuck is wrong with you, you fucking baby? Do you think he would have won if he was in it? Uh, probably. Yeah? Yeah. He's got a lot of skills. He's very strong. I think that if he volunteered to be in it, though, like, their entire... Both of their families would have died, so... Like, I get it. Yeah. No. Man, baby. The amount of emotional labor both of you guys expect of her is so infuriating. Yes. Absolutely. I feel like there's only, like, two times where Pete has ever, like, said some shit where I was like, what the fuck is wrong with him? And then, I think it was really just, like, once. And then it was, like, the next day or whatever, he was like, hey, I'm really sorry. I was having a breakdown. And Gail, that bitch doesn't apologize. Not at all. Mm-mm. Also, like, the reason Peta's, like, lying and being, like, if it weren't for the baby, like, is to protect her. Yeah. And to get, like, the, the capital, like, citizens yeah. on their side. Yeah. Sure, Bestie, it was probably scary to watch, but you can talk to that about that with a therapist. Yes. Yeah. I'm a proud Gail hater. That's the next shirts we're making. I fucking hate him. Yes, he also didn't tell her he liked her before the game. Yes. yes. That's the other thing. He says, like, I think he says something in Catching Fire where it's like, I always thought we'd get married or, like, I don't know, something like that. And she's like, um. She's like, I was never going to do that. What? What do you mean? I also, as a kid, I remember, like, having a lot of feelings about the Hunger Games. And we're not going to talk about mocking Jay, But specifically in Hunger Games and Catching Fire, I feel like she spends a lot of time being, like, I never want to have a child. Like, I, you know, don't ever want to get married. And Suzanne Collins is an incredible writer because as a kid, I wasn't reading any nuance in that. And as a grown-ass person, like, whenever she talks about it, she's saying, like, I don't want a child that would end up in the games. Like, this world is I don't want to watch my child go to the games. Like, that's it's not fair. fair. It's also I super interesting to me because she's saying she doesn't want to get married because she doesn't want to have a child. And they don't talk about birth control. I was literally just about to ask this. In the Hunger Games books, ever. Not once ever do they talk about birth control. And I think that initially I was like, oh, it must be because it's like young adult. And now I'm curious if it's not that, if it's like a power play on purpose. I think that there is no access to birth control within the districts because they want people to continue making children and living in fear that those children will end up in the games. Yeah. And I think there may be birth control in the capital. I'm reading Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes and they've not mentioned it at all, but it's also from a perspective that I don't think it would be relevant. I thought it was maybe that you could have access to birth control as like um, an unmarried child um, because if there's something stressful happening with like maybe an adult and a child, they don't want to deal with that but I assume that you would not have access to birth control anymore if you were pregnant mm. I mean if you were pregnant if you were married mm. um there's not a smidgen of healthcare in any district yeah after three. that's, that's also true. true that's very true more kids equals more workers mm, I was literally just thinking Vicky um yeah it's really good do you think they just let mothers die probably I don't think President Snow is pro-choice. Yeah, I feel like it's probably accessible in the capital, but not in the districts. I think other, something else they don't really talk about in the movies is that PETA is, like, not well-to-do or anything like that, but, like, much better off than Katniss. Yeah. And they do talk about it in the books, because, like, PETA has not been, like, as bad off as Katniss is. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, I don't think there's an incentive. What's the opposite of an incentive? <laughs> I think there's no other option. I think, yeah, I think it's just the fear. I think really is Except what it being is. abstinent. Yeah. So. Yeah, yeah. 
disincentive. Disincentive. Um, yeah. I also, uh, yeah. I just, as Phoebe said, I just forget what happens. So there's like the moment towards the end where Joanna like jumps on Katniss and is like stabbing her arm. And I was like, this is a weird flex. And then I was like, what's happening? Oh, I think you're right, Bibu. If 12 doesn't. Oh, that's fair. <laughs> because I know 11 doesn't. Um, and yeah, I forgot. And they haven't really talked about it, but she's just taking the tracker out of her arm, right? Yeah. Um, I don't think they said that. I think they I might, think, I, I think, think they said it at the beginning of I think they say it first thing in Mockingjay, yeah. Because um, she's still like, what the fuck happened? I also would have been, oh, oh, we have to talk about Plutarch's watch. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So at the beginning ish of Catching Fire, they're like on their little victory tour, and she meets Plutarch, who is the new game maker for the Quarter Quell or whatever. Yes. And they're like dancing, and he's an old man, and he's like, I've got this new watch. And it's got like a little Mockingjay symbol that like pops up on it and it goes away. And like Phoebe was saying, when you read it the first time, you were like, hmm. Yeah. I was not. Like, I knew what was going to happen because I had seen the movies. But if I had read that for the first time, I would have absolutely taken it the same way, like, tons of people in the Capitol are wearing the Mockingjay, not for revolution, but for being like, oh, my God, I want to rep my fave girly from the Hunger Games. Like, I love her. He did slam So I definitely would have thought of it as just him being like, you were my favorite player. I'm so glad you won. Kind of vibes. And not at all, like... And she even says when she meets those absolute randos, which... Maybe it'll be relevant in Mockingjay, but I feel like it happened for no reason. She's, like, in the woods one day, and there's, like, two people who ran away from District 8. I have autism. The reason that they're there is to, like, seed this, like, oh, maybe 13 exists. I guess that's true. Because she'd never thought that before, and they're talking about, like, here's our theories on why 13 exists. Yeah. That's true, I guess. Yeah. Um, Because otherwise it would be, like, completely out of the fucking blue that in Mockingjay she's there. Yeah. That's true. Um, but that's also where she finds out, like, that other districts are using the Mockingjay as, like, a symbol. Mm, yes. Yeah, yeah. But in that, she has a line where it's, like, I guess for some districts, like, the Mockingjays become a symbol of, like, revolution. But for the capital, it's just, like, a fancy little, like, in-the-know decor. Yeah. And I was, like, if I had read this for the first time as a kid, not seeing the movies, I would have been, like, oh, that's why she put that line in there, because that's all it is to Plutarch. Yeah. Which is a weird name. Yeah. It's a fun name. They all got fun names. Hunger Game in world merch is a wild thought. I feel like that's what it is though, right? Like that's definitely they what say it is. like I think that's why they have that part in the movie where uh it's like during catching fire, they're showing like President Snow on like his granddaughter and like her hair's in a braid and he's like, What's your hair doing? Yeah. And she's like, It's in a braid like Katniss and he's like, Crazy. <laughs> Crazy. Crazy. How fucking old is he supposed to be? The president. Uh, old as shit? Uh, hold on. I can do the math on that. Pause. Insert Hades gif. <laughs> crazy. 83. You crazy girl. Prime peepaw years! Yeah, he, does he have a granddaughter in the book? Or are they just not talking about her? They will later. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, they haven't talked about her no, yet. No, yeah. Um... Also, yes. I Are they going to talk about why his mouth smells like blood? Is that going to be fucking relevant? Because yes. they do not talk about it in the movie. They will. They will. It'll be super relevant. <laughs> um, him being like, I know that Gail kissed you. The president being like, I know that Gail kissed you. Yeah. I was, so, like, do they have cameras in the woods? Yes. Okay. Similar to the game cameras, you, like, can't see that they're there. Oh, they did not say that. What do you mean? They didn't say you couldn't see them. I presumed you could see them. Oh, I don't think so. I just assumed it was like drones. No. Oh, well, I was doing... I thought they just didn't put them in the movie because it would have distracted everyone. No, it's that they're like in like knots of trees and shit. I thought. They don't ever talk about like seeing them. Yeah, I just assumed it wasn't relevant. No, you're probably right. I guess it's probably hidden. All the birds. Yeah, I thought it was mainly birds. 
It's so good in her dialogue. I presume the birds were the cameras. It is so good. It is right off the bat, I would say, like, three notches darker than Hunger Games. So, like, if you're somebody who that's information for you to know, know that. In the movie, Katniss can see the cameras, but in the books, I think she just assumes they're everywhere. Yeah. Oh, my God. I also, um, she talks about, like, how President Coyne looks, which is so funny because I, the, every time I watch those movies, all three times that I've watched them, I guess, um, <coughs> I was like, her hair is so interesting. And I had, I thought it was just a choice the costume designer made. I didn't realize that she was going to talk about her hair for, like, a whole paragraph. And I missed the first part because I was reading chat. Whose hair? Katniss's hair? No, no, no. The, uh, President Coyne. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Because yeah. every time I watch it, I'm like, because that it's not Jillian Anderson, but she almost looks like Jillian it's Anderson. It's that Scottish girly pop. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, her yes. hair is so straight. Absolutely weird board. Um, do, 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 do. All the higher ups. Oh, that was the other thing I was going to say. I wish that they had made the capital look the way that they're described in the book. Because it's so good. Them being like, she has pea green skin. Yes. And I was like, that's exactly the kind of shit rich people do. And like bright blue hair and like gold face tattoos. Yeah, they're all supposed to be like funky and like, yeah. One of them has their skin dyed to be like a little like zebra, right? Or something like that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's very cool. They said that they tried to do that in the movies and that it just, like, looked silly, basically. That's probably fair. But, like, you couldn't take it seriously. But, like, it is silly. The capital, they should have gone way harder in the movie. Yes. Oh, that's right. They do see Tigress later. Right? Is that a different movie? That's, yeah. That's the third one. Yeah. It's I don't so remember good. anything that happens in these movies. I don't know who Julianne Moore is. Oh, yeah, the the Avoxes. Yes. They do not uh, talk about them at all in the in the movie. No. Do you think Julianne Moore is Scottish? It is apparently Julianne Moore. Google her. Who's Julianne Moore? Google her. Maybe I think she's Scottish and I'm wrong. Yeah, yes. Is she not Scottish? What else is she in? Oh my god. North Carolina. Oh, she's a redhead. She is a redhead. She does look so much like Julianne Anderson. Like from the nose and the mouth. And actually, no, I think the eyes and the nose. Maybe not her mouth. They could be sisters. That's my bad. Do they? They're shown in the movies, but not discussed. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, like, working. They're, like, in the background. Oh, they also, like, I had, watching the movies, I had no idea. You watch the first movie, and I'm going to pay attention this time, but, like, they don't really talk about, like, the hob, where they do their, like, black market illegal selling and trading at fucking all. So then when they blow it up in Catching Fire, I'm like, what is that? I don't know anything about this. And they at least talk about it a little bit in The Hunger Games, and then they obviously talk about it a lot more in Catching Fire. Um, actually, no, the other way. They take, they talk about it a lot in Hunger Games. I feel like she's the perfect hotness to be evil. She's, like, very, like... Oh, yeah. I'm gonna be a bad bitch. I Is she her. evil? Never mind. No, but in the movie, I don't feel like... I mean, I haven't read Mockingjay yet. But I feel like the vibe is that, like, power corrupts. Not so much, like... I feel like evil is, like... You were kind of born evil and you got more evil. Interesting. The long world of Jurassic Park. What? What do you mean the long world of Jurassic Park? Do they mean the lost world? That makes more there sense. There you go, there you go, there you go. Write that down. <laughs> I thought there was a movie we missed. No, 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 no. Ah, yes, long Jurassic Park. I was like, is it only about the Brachiosaurus? It's only the Brachiosauruses. Oh my goodness. <sighs> We're talking about President Coin. I love my wife. I love her so much. We were talking about okay, this is a secret. This is a secret. I'm get this is gonna be a spoiler for Mocking Jay that I'm gonna tell you. So if you don't know, sorry. Hop away and then hop back if you don't want a spoiler. 
but the love of my life was literally like, oh, you know, like I, uh, I, like Rue's death obviously was like sad, but it's not as sad as I would be if like Finnick died. I was like, <laughs> I know. <laughs> I was, uh, sobbed. The way that one destroyed me. Wrecked. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. No. It's not going to be good. Yeah. I will try to. I know. I know. She, she knows She knows about the other one. Because we exclusively call Gail a sister killer. Like, that's all that I call him when referring to him. Yes. Yes. Anyway. <laughs> I'm so excited. I fucking hate Gil so much. And he is so fucking rancid in Mockingjay. <laughs> it's going to be really good. Laugh out loud. That's super fair. Oh, she won't watch the stream. No, 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 no. Stinky. Cody Brown is much worse, I would say. The Prim Reaper. Stop. <laughs> yeah, truly. Cody Brown's not even hot. He's got a skin headband. He's ruining people's day. Oh my god, I fucking hate Gail. Yes. Heart wrenching. Heart wrenching. The actor's not actually stressful. No, 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 no. He he cheated on Miley Cyrus, Liam Hemsworth. So that is the most bad vibes people have. Yes, it's that Liam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One of the Hemsworths. Prim Reaper's really bad. I love it. It's so good. Yeah. No, 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 no. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's just, like, a bummer in the way that, like, your friend had a shitty boyfriend and you don't like that boyfriend is shitty. Oh, interesting. Lowercase Hemsworth? No, for real. Yeah, he is not an Ariana Grande cheater. I've not seen the Witcher stuff. Sorry. It's a video game first, right? M neutral, but more towards dislike, yeah. I see him, I'm like, oh, this fucking guy. This guy sucks. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't be like. Oh, books first, interesting. Huh. Yes, exactly, Phoenix. Hi, baby. What are you up to? Just, you know, causing a ruckus. Oh, brother, this guy stinks. That's us at Gale. Yeah. And Liam Hemsworth, actually. Yeah. Hey, hey, hey. I just put my shirt on me. Did you wash it? Yeah. Okay. Crispy. Um, I forgot what I was saying. Yeah. I am excited... To read the third one. Really excited to read the new one. I think our plan right now is that I should be able to finish the other two before the new movie comes out. <clears throat> and then I think we're going to invite Graham to come stay the night. Because we were just talking to her about them. Yeah. And then watch all the first three, or the first four movies together. Yeah. And like a little slumber party day. I was talking to Graham about Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes and she ordered it and it gets to her house today. She's very excited. Yeah. Because she read all the Hunger Games books when I did, when I was in, like, middle school. I also love all the other Victors. I feel like I learned a lot more about, is Wyrus, like, 
Does she talk like that in the movie? No. So I was going to say, little. in the I feel like it's a little. I feel like yeah. in the book she's quite literally only saying like four words and kind of just repeating them. Yeah. The new movie comes out in November. Although we won't talk about it much because there's rumors that the strike is literally going to go on until next year. Oh, shit. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um. So we might make a TikTok about watching the old ones. Yeah. I don't think we're... Yeah. But I don't think we'll talk about going to see the new one. Um, anyway. Uh, the Hunger Games prequel, yeah. Yeah. So, but in I the movie, I think she is, like, kind of talking more at the little, like, training thing. Yeah, they, they, they don't call them nuts and bolts in the movie, I don't think. Oh, do they not? I don't think so. I don't remember ever hearing it. Huh. Um, I feel like such trash. I have a headache. I have to leave. I'm so sorry. <laughs> You're being really brave. I'm so sorry. Um, I'm going to throw up. I don't know what's wrong with me. <laughs> it's mentioned. Maybe once. Uh, Yeah. So they... I feel like Wyrus in the book was very, like, only saying TikTok to try and get everyone to understand that the arena's a clock. And then also, she says, like, midnight and, like, a couple other things. Whereas, like, I really feel like, and I'll pay attention this time, I really feel like in the movie she's, like, speaking kind of, like, panicky and, like, quick. And, like, repetitive in the movie, but, like, definitely more than just, like, three phrases. I think. Um, and then Beatty in the book. The ghost cushion, someone made it and sent it to us. I'm so sorry. I don't remember who. It was, like, two years ago. And then this one is actually a rug. Um, it was a bath mat. And I hand sewed both sides together and flipped them and stuffed it to turn it into a pillow. So it's just a huge fucking pillow now. But yeah, the ghost got, it was a gift. Oh my God, where's my thingy? And then the Hey Boo one is from Target last year. The girl bed is in the guest room. We have a video of us doing, of setting up the guest room that we just posted. Oh my, so bad. We're in the middle of filming a video about decorating for Halloween. Um, thanks. I like making the vlogs. I, what I hope is that our YouTube section, like, section, like, like area of our life really pops off. Um, cause it is like who pays the best. Okay. We have 18... Point nine, eight, eight, I can't talk. Eight point nineteen thousand subscribers. Um. Oh, I need to edit our bio because it's wrong because I had a birthday. I love them. I love them. So what's really interesting is that some of them will have like four thousand and some change views. And, like, the guest room one we just did is 2,000 views. And then, like, yeah. I don't know what, like, how people determine which ones to watch. But we're trying to post more often. 